All right, this video is to address some issues uh, revolving around the idea of uh, assessing profit from producing and not producing. Um, this was an issue on some of the answers in the module for quant assessment and in particular in the module for explain assessment. In that explain assessment, while some people had explanations that were that were okay, um, the graph, uh, the work on the graph was was just completely wrong and, and that's what kind of created a problem or that's what generated the unsatisfactory. So I just want to use this brief video to go over the steps and think about, um, well review the steps and think about this idea of of uh, the profit from not producing. So it's a little involved and um, it's really just kind of to clue you in onto the steps to review. Um, hopefully the video will help you do that. So anyway, so first thing we're going to do is we're just going to choose a price and we'll just, uh, I think the easiest thing to do is just choose a price, this price of 14. So we'll draw that straight across. So the price and that equals the marginal revenue. That's our first step. Second step is looking at that intersection of the marginal revenue and marginal cost. And we're just going to draw that slice. And I'm drawing that slice uh, above that uh, intersection too because we need to use that average total cost curve. So this gives us our profit maximizing level of output. Okay, so next thing is we have to go through the steps identifying the total revenue the total cost, and the difference between the two is the uh, profit. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to change colors here. We're going to say, so the total revenue is the price times the quantity. So we've got this box here. So that's our total revenue box. Next item is the total cost box. I'll do that in red. So the total cost box is determined by at the quantity going up to that average total cost curve and across. So this box is our total cost box. So you'll notice that the total cost box is um, uh, larger than our total revenue box and so the difference between the two and I'll do this as a highlight. Um, I'm trying to be as careful as possible. So this box is our profit or our negative profit. It's the loss from producing. Okay. Next thing we want to do is look at what is the profit from not producing. Okay. Well, first of all, as we went through these, these steps to determine the level of profit from producing, the maximum possible profit, everything is lined up at the same quantity. Boxes are lining up. They have the same left edge, and the same right edge. And that was something that was kind of lost on some people. All right. So next thing is to determine what is the loss from not producing. So because profit equals total revenue minus total cost, right? Well, first of all, if we don't produce, there's no total revenue, which leaves total cost, which is the same thing as minus. Minus total cost is minus total variable cost minus total fixed cost, right? So, but if we're not producing anything, there's no total variable cost. So that means when you're not producing, your profit is automatically equal to negative total fixed cost. It's a loss equal to the total fixed cost because the idea is um, if you do not produce, you still have to pay your fixed costs. Fixed costs are, do not vary with output, so if you produce nothing or if you produce a lot, total fixed cost remains the same. So that's the idea behind the, uh, the profit occurring from not producing. And so if we look at this graph, how are we going to determine the total fixed cost? Well, the way to, I mean, yeah, total fixed cost. So what we know is total cost is equal to total variable cost plus total fixed cost, okay? So if we, we've already identified the total cost. The total cost was this box right here. Okay. What about our total variable cost? Well, the same idea is at this quantity, if we, we have this average variable cost, if we go up to that, and maybe I'll do it in blue, if we go up to that average variable cost and go across, okay, 
uh, we get, and we have to be careful about showing this box, within this blue box, that's the total variable cost. So again, if we take that total cost box, okay, subtract that total variable cost box, the remaining box is the total fixed cost. So is there a way to... We're going to go to orange, I guess. Okay, so I'm going to go to the marker. So what's the total fixed cost? Well, I'm going to color over the red box, which was our um, profit, or loss, from producing. And I'm going to have to color over it because we're going to determine that the area of that total variable cost, I mean total fixed cost box, is greater than the area of the profit or the loss. So that's telling us when the price, you know, so this price was between the uh, break-even and the shutdown price. So what we're confirming is that the loss from producing, which was the that red box we originally had, is less than the the size of the total fixed cost, which is the loss from not producing. So we've confirmed that we're better off producing and losing money than not producing and losing money because we'll lose less money by producing. Okay, so you could take the same graph and go to a price below the uh, shutdown price, and what you'll see is the reverse. You'll use the same exact steps. You'll use the steps of draw that marginal revenue line, find the intersection with the marginal cost, draw your total revenue box, your total cost box, the difference is your loss from producing, but what you'll then find is in following the same steps of showing the um, total fixed cost, which will be a, a different looking box, but technically is the same size, you'll see that the loss from not producing is uh, smaller than the loss from producing. So in fact, maybe what I'll do is I will go to the next graph and try and show this, okay? So we will again, we'll go with the price of, uh, well, we'll go with the price of 10. So I'll go here. So this is our price. So it's a little risky because it's showing it's just tangent to that uh, the bottom of the marginal cost curve, but that's our price. And so we're going to determine the profit from producing. So the intersection of the price and the marginal cost curve. So we'll go straight up. Okay, we're barely touching that uh, average total cost. So if we're looking at the total revenue, uh, we'll go with the blue here. The total revenue box is that. Remember, we're at this profit maximizing level of output. Uh, we then go to what is the total cost box. So again, we'll go at that quantity, go up to where we hit that average total cost and go across. Okay, so this red box is our total cost box, which means we'll go with the blue and the marker. So the difference between the total cost box and the total revenue box is this area, okay? So within that fat blue marker, that's our loss from producing, okay? Now we have to evaluate what's our loss from not producing. And again, we determined that loss from not producing is just the negative total fixed cost. And remember, we determined that the total fixed cost was equal to the total cost minus the total variable cost. So again, we've already identified the total cost box. And again, we're just evaluating everything at this Q star again, just for convenience. So this whole box was the total cost box. We use this idea at this quantity going up until we hit that uh, average variable cost and go across. So this lower red box is our total variable cost, using the same idea of how we generated the total, uh, the total cost box. And so what are we left with? Let me just change color here so it's a little easier to uh, show. So the, because we have total cost minus total variable cost, we have total cost subtract this area of the total variable cost and that means this area 
represents the total fixed cost. So again, if the total fixed cost is our loss from not producing, we can see that the loss, let's go to black, this loss from not producing is smaller than the loss from producing. Okay, so again, everything's lining up kind of vertically. We are using the average total cost curve, the average variable cost curve, and the price. So hopefully with these two examples, it's, you'll be able to draw the graphs correctly and support your answers. Okay, so I hope this helps.